Hello everyone, welcome to the introduction of regular expressions. In this video, we're going to talk about what are regular expressions and how to use them in Java programs. Note that regular expression is not a Java specific feature. Uh, most of the modern programming languages have built in libraries and APIs that will work with regular expressions. And most of these languages will use regular expressions in a similar fashion. Um, some of them have slightly changes in syntax and slightly different method names, but uh, the fundamentals of regular expressions are the same. So most of the things that I will teach in this video will also apply to other languages, even though I choose to only use Java in my tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's talk about what are regular expressions. So regular expressions are special strings that uh, describe a certain search pattern. And some of the examples include um, email addresses must have an at symbol and end with a .com, .org, or .edu, et cetera, et cetera. Or uh, the URL um, that end with slash login or slash index. Uh, another example would be um, a data format uh, must follow uh, four digits of year and followed by a dash and followed by two digits of month and dash and followed by two digits of date. And it can only contain digits and dashes. Um, and the last example uh, here is a password. Uh, we usually encounter this when we uh, try to register uh, for some website and they ask us to provide a password that uh, must include at least one uppercase letter and one digit. So things like that are uh, patterns that can be described by regular expressions. So here are some of the common use cases for regular expression in programming. It's mainly used for pattern matching. For example, form validation in JavaScript can be done by using regular expressions. And in some of the modern web application frameworks, regular expressions are used to do URL matching and routing. Last but not least, we can use regular expressions to extract information from large files. Things like date and time, URL, and email addresses all can be found by regular expression. So that's enough of the concepts. Let's jump right into IntelliJ and see regular expressions in action. As you can see, I have already created a new project called regular expression and wrote a little program that will do pattern matching for us. This program is a slightly modified version of the regex test harness.java from the official Java doc on oracle.com. I'll put a link in the description for you to check that out. But now let me walk you through this program and see how it works. So basically what this program does is it uses an infinite loop uh, to keep the program running. And inside the loop, we ask for user inputs. Uh, one input is for the pattern that we want to search for, which is the regex. Um, the second input is the string that we want to search to see if it matches the first input. And the pattern class is what Java uses to store our regular expressions. So we can use the compile method to compile the first input string into a regex. Then we use this to initialize a matcher. The matcher class is where the actual matching happens. And then we can set a flag to false, indicating that we haven't found any matches yet. Next, we do another while loop. This time, we use the find method from the matcher class as the looping condition. It will return true if we found a match. And if we found a match, we want to be able to output the whole matching sequence, as well as the starting and ending indexes of the matching sequence. Then we set the flag to true, indicating that we have already found a match. We can keep looping because the find method will keep finding matches in our 
uh, in the rest of the sequence until there is no more matches to be found. At last, if we didn't find any matches at all, uh, the flag will be false um, so that we can output just no match found. So now let's run this program and start learning about regular expressions. So let's start with the most basic form of regular expression, which is to match the string as exactly what it is. For example, if I want to match a pattern that says hello, um, so my regex will just be the word hello. So I'll, I will say hello as my regex. And for the input string, um, if I want to match hello, if it just hello, right, if I run this, it will match because the string is hello and the pattern is hello. They are the same. So that's a match. So we found a match. Um, the matching sequence is hello and the starting index is zero and the ending index is five. Uh, take, take a look at um, this index because the starting at index is zero and this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, but index five is actually empty, right? That's because the starting uh, index is inclusive and the ending index is exclusive. Uh, so remember that. Now, since we're using the find method, we can actually find uh, all of the hellos in our input string if we have multiple hellos. So let's try that again. We still want to find hello. So our regex is still hello, but this time uh, let's change our input string to uh, hello world, hello world. Um, if I run this, um, this time, I find two hellos. The first hello starting at index zero and ending at index five. The second hello, which is this one, starting at index 13 and ending at index 18. Um, another thing to remember is regular expressions are case sensitive. If I change hello to uppercase, uh, it won't match. So let's take a look. I still want to find hello. Uh, this time, the um, input string becomes uh, hello world, hello world. With the first hello, have a capital H. And let's run this. This time, I only have find one hello, which is the second hello, starting at in index 13 and ending at index 18. That's because our first hello have a capital H. Now that we learned about the basic form of regular expressions, um, let's take a look at character classes. So character classes are basically a set of characters um, that is surrounded by a pair of square brackets. For example, I can have a regular expression that is written like this. Um, I have opening brackets and then BCT, closing bracket, um, AKE. So um, this regular expression uh, means that we want to match strings um, that are bake, cake, or take. So the character set is basically just to match any of the characters inside of this uh, square brackets. We want to match only one of them, not all of them at the same time. Uh, let me expand this window a little bit. So for example, if my input string is fake, it is a match. Um, if I still want to use this, I say BCT, closing brackets, AKE. And if I do cake, it's still a match. 
and let's try one more time. Um, and this time I want to find bake, cake, take. It will find all of them um, because I have bake, cake, and take. And BCT are all inside of the square brackets. But if I have a string, you know, look like um, all of them, it won't match. So if I have BCT, AKE, it is a match only for the take, but not BC. I can also do negation with character classes. Um, the syntax for negation is to use a caret in front of the character set. Um, so if I have a uh, caret inside uh, before my BCT, um, this means uh, we will match any string that is not start with B or C or T followed by AKE. So let's take a look. If my input string becomes uh, for example, fake, uh, it is a match because F is not B or C or T. Um, so it is a match, right? If I do um, caret BCT and closing brackets AKE, this time if I do cake, there is no match found because uh, we don't want to see C in front of AKE. So that's the negation of character classes. Uh, next, let's talk about ranges. Uh, we can use range to simplify our character class. Uh, for example, if our character set includes all of the 26 uh, letters from the alphabet, uh, we don't have to write them all out inside of the square brackets. Uh, instead, we can use a range from A to Z um, to indicating that we want all of the uh, letters from alphabet. So let's take a look. Uh, if I want to match all the uh, character letters, I can do A uh, dash Z in square brackets. And let's do uh, pop, right? So um, this is our pattern. This will match any uh, letter from A to Z followed by pop. So if I say T pop, uh, it's a match, right? And if I do um, A to Z and do um, pop again, and this time let's try uh, E pop, it's still a match. And this range are actually inclusive. So if I do A pop or Z pop, it will still uh, match the pattern. Uh, we can also use ranges on numbers. Uh, for example, if I have you know, 4 to 9 and then pop, um, I can say 5 pop. Right? It is a match. Um, but if I uh, do 4 to 9 and pop, um, if I do 2 pop, there's no match found because two is not uh, between four and nine. We can also combine the negation and range to produce, uh, to match patterns that uh, is not inside of the range. So for example, if I do uh, carrots and uh, zero to six, um, let's do um, ABC. And if I say uh, four ABC, there is no match because I, I don't want any number from zero to six uh, in front of my ABC, right? So um, if I do um, carrots zero to six and then ABC, and this time if I do uh, eight ABC, it is a match, right? Because eight is outside of zero to six. And that's how we combine uh, two um, like two different kind of regex operations together. So now, uh, let me first rerun this program. Uh, since we're all the way down to the bottom, let's uh, go back to the top again. And 
um, one more thing that I want to talk about is um, since these are essentially just character sets, uh, we can do set operations uh, with them. So first, let's see how to do unions on the character set. Um, for example, if we have a, we want to match any letter from C through K, uh, as well as um, S uh, all the way to Z, right? We can do things like this and um, followed by 0, 0, 0. And this is our regex. Uh, this means that we want the union of C through K with the union with the set of S through Z. So uh, if I have any letter that fall into that range, uh, it will be a match. So if I do W000, is it is a match. And uh, if I do um, if I do things like F000, it is also a match because F uh, is inside of C through K. Um, but if I do um, if I have the string of, uh, for example, if I have n000, it is not a match because n is not inside of the union of this range. Uh, so that's how we do union. Um, since we have union, we must also have inter intersection. So the intersection operation is very similar to the uh, end operations in programming. So we use double m% percent to do intersection. Uh, let's see a example. So, for example, I want zero through seven to intersect uh, with three through nine. And uh, let's see if I have so if I have six, it is a match, right? Because um, the regular expression that we wrote is basically um, the result of three through seven. So six is within that range, right? Um, if I have zero through seven intersect with another set um, three through nine, and then if we want to match two, it won't match because two doesn't fall into that intersection. And the last operation on set is subtraction. Uh, so subtraction is basically the um, negation on intersections. For example, if we have uh, 0 through 9, uh, but at the same time, I don't want to match anything from the set of 7, 6, uh, six 7, and 8. Um, so that's how we do subtraction. Right? We use a caret, which is a negation operator uh, in front of the, uh, the second set. Right? And this way, we will match any number from 0 to 9 except for six, seven, and eight. So if I do four, it is a match. Uh, but if I do, um, if I have, uh, let's write that again. If I have something like an eight, it won't match. So um, that's how we do union operations, intersections, as well as subtractions on character sets. Now let's explore some of the predefined character classes in regexes. Um, so the first one is the uh, dot character. So dot in regex uh, will match any character. So it is um, a kind of like a wildcard character. Uh, it will match any number, any character, any uh, symbol. So for example, uh, I can use it to match any letter, uh, it will match. I can use it to match any uh, digits, uh, it will match. I can use it to match any special character, uh, for example, like this, uh, it will match. Um, so that's the wildcard character. Uh, next, uh, let's see, is the backslash D. So backslash D will match any digit through uh, from 0 through 9. So it can match any digit, right? Um, so backslash lowercase d. Uh, it won't match anything else. 
it will just match the uh, it's actually the same with uh, we do less right we use range from 0 through 9 um, instead um, regular expression make a meta character so backslash d uh, to represent the uh, range from 0 through 9 it won't match any uh, letters so it won't match p uh, we also have the negation of uh, lowercase d, which is the backslash uppercase d, uh, it will match any of the non-digit character. Uh, so it will match a letter. Um, it will match a special character, uh, but it won't match uh, a digit. All right. And uh, next, let's see. It's the uh, backslash lowercase s. Uh, this will match any white space. So if I do press space, uh, it is a match. Or it can be matched against um, a tab. So I hit tab and I hit enter, uh, it will match the tab. Um, it won't match anything else, um, letter or uh, digit, right? And we have um, uppercase S, backslash uppercase S, uh, it will match any of the non white space character. Okay, so it's basically the negation of backslash lowercase s. Uh, it will match anything other than a white space. All right, so, um, so next we have uh, backslash lowercase w. It will match any uh, word character. A uh, word meaning uh, it is um, includes um, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, and digit from zero to nine, as well as a um, um, underscore. All right. So let's see. So we can match a digit. Uh, we can match any letter. Uh, we can match a uppercase letter. Uh, we can match against a uh, underscore, right? We can, and that's about it, right? We cannot match anything else. Uh, if I have a special character, it won't match, right? And the um, negation of uh, this is backslash uppercase W, uh, which will match any of the non-word character. So... Uh, it will match things like, um, mm, for example, it will match a backslash, right? It will match, um, will match a white space, right? But it won't match anything uh, from the um, lowercase w. So it won't match digits. Uh, it won't match a underscore. Uh, it won't match. Uh, for example, a any letter. So that's enough about the uh, predefined character classes. Uh, let's rerun this program and start from the top again. Uh, this time, let's talk about um, how to match against repeating patterns. So imagine we have a string that uh, repeated nine five times. So we have nine 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 nine. Right? We have five nines. And if we want to match that, um, it is essentially, you know, repeating the pattern nine five times, right? So the way we repeat a certain pattern is to use a pair of curly braces. So inside of the curly brace, uh, we we write how many times we want it to repeat. So this time we, we wrote a nine and then curly braces and then inside of curly braces is five. It means we want to repeat nine five times. So this will match the pattern. Uh, this will match the string uh, look like this. Uh, if I hit enter, it will match the whole string. Um, and if I have a pattern that looks like this, so A, B, C, and then inside of curly braces, I have three, uh, it will match a string that looks like this. So A, B, C, C, C. So it means that um, we want to repeat C three times. So as you can see, this is a match. 
But what if we want to match a string looks like this? So if I want to match a string looks like ABC, 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 I want the ABC to repeat three times. Uh, what I can do is I can put the ABC inside of a parenthesis. So I do uh, print, open print, ABC, closing print, and then followed by a curly brace. And inside the curly brace is the time that I want it to repeat. So this time we can match for ABC, ABC, ABC. So that is a match. So that's how we um, match against repeating patterns. And on top of that, uh, we can also match patterns um, that is repeating uh, from a certain range. So let me explain what I mean. So I still use the pattern ABC. Um, this time I want it to repeat at least three times, but no more than five times. So uh, we use a comma to separate the lower bound and the upper bound of the repeating times. And let's try to match ABC, 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 and ABC. So it is repeated four times. And this is a match, right? Because we want it to repeat um, no less than three times, no more than five times. And if um, sometimes we're not sure about um, the upper bound of the repeating time, uh, we can leave it blank. So if I do A, B, C, and then um, curly brace, uh, three, uh, comma, and then just closing the curly brace, um, this means we want it to repeat at least three times but there is no upper bound on how many times you can repeat this. So if I have a string uh, which repeated um, more than three times, um, it is a match. So that's how we do uh, repeating uh, and repeat times inside a certain range. Next, let's talk about some of the quantifiers in regex. Um, the first one is the star symbol. The star symbol will match any pattern uh, repeated zero or more times. Um, so for example, if I have um, A star B C, um, this will match any string that is started with A repeated zero or more times and followed by B and C. So for example, uh, this will match string A A A A B C. And it will also match um, string a b c right it will repeat um, zero or more times so it can be repeated zero times uh, which in this case is just b c it's still a match now the next symbol next quantifier is the plus sign um, the plus sign will not allow uh, repeat zero times so it will match any pattern that is repeated one or more times so for example I change the star symbol to plus, I have a plus bc. Um, this time, if I do abc, it still match. Uh, if I do uh, aaaabc, it is a match. Uh, but if I do uh, bc, it is not a match because um, the plus sign requires the pattern to at least repeat one time. Next is the question mark. Um, so question mark uh, will match uh, the pattern that is repeated zero or one time. Um, so if I do a question mark BC, um, it will match the A repeated zero or one time. Um, so if I say ABC, it is a match. And if I say BC, it is still a match. And if I do uh, AAA, bc um, it will only match uh, starting from the um, last a um, so it will match the last abc but not the leading two a's um, because it can only match one character for the uh, question mark next let's talk about uh, two more special symbols um, let's first uh, rerun this program let's start from the top now, imagine uh, we want to test the input string to see if it starts with a certain pattern. 
Um, in right correct expression, we can use the um, caret sign to uh, test that. Um, so we saw caret sign in the uh, uh, character set um, to use as a negation operation. But if it used outside of the um, uh, square brackets, it in, it means that uh, the start part portion of uh, the string. So let's see if I have if I want to test if the string is starting with the letter A B C. Um, what I can do is I use the caret followed by a pair of parentheses, and I do A B C. In this way. Any string that is start with ABC, it's a match. So, for example, I, I can match against ABC followed by any numbers or letters. Um, it is a match. And I can test um, ABC um, against uh, ABC, ABC. It is still a match. Every string starting with ABC, it's a match. Um, the same thing applies to if we want to test um, if the string is ending with a certain pattern. Um, this time we can use the dollar sign. So it's the dollar sign. Uh, if we want to test if the string is ending with ABC, uh, what we can do is we can use a parenthesis and we type ABC, um, closing print, and then followed by dollar sign. So this way, if any string is ending with the sequence ABC, it is a match. Um, so the preceding characters doesn't matter um, as long as the end with A, B, C, it is a match. Um, if we use the starting and end symbol together, uh, we can test the um, string as exactly what it is. So if I want the string to be exactly A, B, C, D, E, I can do carrots A, B, C, D, E, closing print and then followed by dollar sign. So this will only match the string A, B, C, D, E. It won't match anything else. Um, see if I have A, B, C, D, E, and then dollar sign, uh, A, B, C, D, E, followed by numbers, uh, it won't match because it's not ending with A, B, C, D, E, uh, even though it started with A, B, C, D, E. Um, same thing uh, if I want to test uh, some string that um, is, you know, starting with random strings and end with A, B, C, D, E, it won't match because it's not starting with A, B, C, D, E. So that's about it for the first part of this tutorial. Uh, we covered all the basics of regular expressions. And uh, in the second part of this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some um, example questions and do some practices um, to better understand all of those concepts that we learned in this video.